Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant TV. Recently, Red Giant released a short film called Order Up, directed by Seth Worley. If you haven't seen the film, you can check it out at redgiant.com forward slash order up. The film relied on a lot of object removal using Mocha Pro to pull off the single shot look. So in this episode of Red Giant TV, Harry Frank will walk you through the process that he used for object removal in Order Up. Take it away, Harry. Right. No, I just meant you could start the tutorial now. Yeah. Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here, and in this lesson, I'm going to go through some of the visual effects that we produced for the short film Order Up. Specifically, I'll be tackling the tracking and removal of certain objects, as well as covering them up with a certain little zap effect where they get zapped away. This is a particularly challenging shot. There's a lot of things going on here. We have a handheld camera that's sort of walking around, and we have items that are scattered throughout the scene that all need to be tracked and digitally painted out and move with this handheld camera motion. So if we take a look at the side-by-side -side of the original plate and the final film, so it's one of these things that if it's done well enough, nobody really notices. So let's tackle one of these. Just pick one of these objects like this can right here and explore all the challenges that we have with this. Obviously, we have to do the tracking. We have our subject walking around in the foreground, so we're actually going to have to go through and remove him from the track. And then we'll have to go in and actually isolate that area, paint it out, and have what we painted out move with the tracking that we've done. And this is all done with Mocha Pro and with the final compositing happening in After Effects. So I'm going to jump over to Mocha Pro and import our clip. I've got two shots that we uh, worked with. Uh, this first shot was the one I just showed you. The second shot was the second part right after our hero says, Nope. And then this is shot number two, which has an, a bunch of removals that were also done. With the chairs and the box and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to work with shot number one. So I'm going to import that. The location is shown right here. And what I'm going to do is actually put it in a subdirectory. I'm just calling FX. If I don't create a subdirectory, it's going to put all of the image sequences that we're going to write uh, when we create the removal, which is written as an uh, image sequence. It's going to put it all in the same directory as the uh, source clip, as well as the project and all that. So I think it's a good idea just to put all the stuff into a subdirectory. Everything else I'll leave at its default settings, and I'm going to overwrite the old project that I did. Let's start from scratch. So the first thing that we need to do is not track the movement. The first thing we need to do is create a mat that we can use to exclude this character from the track. Because as he's moving around in front of the uh, all of the objects here, we need to disregard him from the track. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Now, I don't need to roto him. Don't think that I'm doing a roto job here, although where he intersects with certain objects, there was a, a little bit of rotoscoping done. But in, in this case, we really don't need to do any rotoscoping. I'm going to add one more point right there. So we just need to do a very rough track. Now I can go through and sort of manually do this and, and uh, animate the splines as he moves along, but I can get a fairly decent track out of this simply by hitting the track button and it's going to track him along and I'll certainly have to do some manipulation of the shape. Again, I'm just looking for a rough shape, I'm not looking for anything very detailed. So right there, pizza box is moving, so I can take these two points and slide them in a little bit. Keep tracking. I'll worry about the pizza box slipping out later on. Now I'll let this track all the way to the beginning, and I'll just create a keyframe at that very first frame, because he kind of stops right at that point there. So 
darken up a little bit. And now I'll track this forward. And at the point where he goes out of frame, we'll trim this track up because we won't need this mat anymore at that point. Okay, so with him out of frame there, I'll go to the button down here to set the layer point out. Let's also label this as my pizza dude layer. So there's probably a couple points where the box slips out here. I'll just do that. I could have done these in two separate layers, but I think it's just as much work to draw a shape around the box and track it in. Now I could track the plane of the pizza box and work with that, but I also found that to be just as much work as doing it this way. I'm going to delete that keyframe because I don't think I did a very good job keeping these points in the same spot. Okay. Let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, there we go. So this matte shape right here will be excluded from our ground track as long as I set up the layer order correctly. So we can show that actually by enabling our track mats. So if I go here, enable selected track mats, and then I'm gonna create my layer for a ground track. So I'm gonna select an area fairly large to track this huge planar surface, which is the ground. Let's label this to be my ground track. And as I drag this down below, we'll see that this area is excluded from the ground track layer because it is a track mat. It's above the current layer. The, the top layer is considered the foreground. The, the bottom layer is considered the background and it will exclude the foreground because it's behind it. So at this point, I just need to get this tracked. now. Now, as you can see, I might be using a slightly different layout than you are using. Layouts in Mocha Pro and Mocha in general are completely customizable. So I'm using this one that I call the full screen video. Basically, I'm mostly working with the full screen video and I have my layer controls and layer properties and everything else I'm not really too concerned about, although I have my tools up here. If you'd like to uh, customize this the way I've got it here, you can go to reset current layout and set all the controls to hidden and add in just the couple that you'd like. So what you're not seeing that you might be used to seeing is the parameters right here. So this is my layout number one, which I can access by hitting command one, or I'm assuming control one in Windows. And layout number two is sort of the traditional Mocha layout. And this shows all my parameters down here. So right now I am in the tracking module. So I've got my, uh, ground track layer selected, and I can adjust all the parameters for my ground track. So I'm going to select perspective, and I'm also going to increase the minimum number, uh, the minimum percentage of pixels used. Let's hop back to my uh, main, uh, my full screen video layout. Uh, I'm tapping asterisk to get my video to fit to frame there. Now for reference, let's turn these mats off. Um, I'm going to turn on the planar surface right here, show planar surface. And I'm going to align this on the ground with the planar surface that I'm tracking, which is, as I mentioned, the ground. There's a couple faint lines on the, the ground here, which are pretty good uh, ref, uh, reference lines to use to get a nice plane drawn on the ground. And as I track, I'm gonna make sure that this is stuck to the ground and tracking right along with it. Okay, so with just my ground track layer active, I'll lock this other layer, and with a tracking layer selected, I'll go down here to track, and I'll select track backwards. Okay, so I'm at the halfway point here. I tracked from that, uh, just about that middle point, and tracked backward, and just want to make sure that my 
planar surface is actually aligned to the ground, which so far it seems that it is. Now from here, as I go forward, again, the, the camera move walks forward. So the camera perspective is moving forward and we might need to extend or move this uh, spline as the camera move changes, but that's fine. We can make adjustments to this tracking area and we won't affect anything. The planar surface will stay aligned. So let's park it right here and do our tracking forward. Okay, so after tracking forward and backward, I'm pretty happy with how this planar surface is aligning to the ground. So we're good there. Let's uncheck the uh, cog there and lock that track so we don't mess that up. Next, let's outline an area around this can that we would like to uh, replace. So this is the can we're getting rid of. So I'm just going to draw a little area around this can. It can intersect with other objects, that's fine. I'll just call this the can area. And let's drag this down below with Pizza Dude. And what I'm going to do is link this to the ground track. So the tracking that we have done on this uh, ground track right here, this track right here, this area is going to be linked to the ground track or the ground plane. And because we're replacing a planar surface here, we're not uh, worrying about the fact that what used to be there is a can that kind of, while well, it's round and goes up and down and has sides on it and all that, that doesn't matter. What we're going to be replacing it with is a flat surface. So now that we've established an area for that can, I'm actually um, going to draw with the spline the area that we're going to replace. And I'll come back to why we have this, uh, this can area. Uh, because, uh, well, it's just easier. It's more easily shown than described. And I think it'll go a little quicker. So let's zoom in here. I'm going to hold down Z, oops, Z, and get close into our can here. Hold X so we can pan around. And let's get a good spot to paint this can out. I want a fairly clean spot with not a lot of motion blur. So I don't want to park it on a frame that's got too much motion blur right there. So let's draw a spline around the area that we'd like to replace. Now we have a little bit of shadow down here, so let's not forget to include that. And it gets a little close to that box there. We'll do the best we can on that. There we go. Okay, so this is the area that's going to be painted back in. So if I select that, this is layer number four. This is the can remove. And let's also drag this down below, pizza dude. And we don't need to do anything else with this in terms of tracking or anything like that. So this one will also get linked to the ground track. So as I move around, you can see that this area is going to move with the tracking of that planar surface. So what I need to do now is create a clean plate, and this is going to be done in Photoshop, and the clean plate will be re-imported into Mocha, and it will blend that section of the clean plate back in right here and dynamically track it, and actually do a little bit of feathering and uh, blending for us. So to do this, we need to view those parameters again. So right now we're in the tracking module. Let's jump over to remove. And what we need to do is create our clean plate. It's going to make it right here at this frame that I'm parked at, which is frame 147. And in that FX folder that I created, we will find our uh, TIFF file that's waiting for us to paint out in Photoshop. So let's go find it. Okay, so here in my FX folder, I have this TIFF file. This is clean plate shot one and then frame 147. So I'm going to open this up in Photoshop and we're going to paint out this can right here. Now, generally what I do is start with the spot healing brush and just do a first pass just to get rid of the object. So it won't be perfect, but it will be close. And from there we'll match up the area texture and cracks and in the pavement and that kind of stuff. Uh, it does a pretty good job actually. Let's uh, zoom out, or actually, better yet, arrange new window for clean plate. 
So I'm going to have two windows going here side by side where I can see how this looks zoomed out. There we go. So it has a little bit of a painted out look um, because some of the cracks in, in the, the ground don't quite continue. So from there I'm just going to use the clone stamp and kind of continue some of these, these cracks and things and match a little bit of the shading and texture. Take some of the texture over here. So I think that's looking pretty good. So let's jump back into Mocha here. And remember we are in the remove module. We uh, have our clean plate clip already defined and that frame uh, 147 is ready to go. I need to check, use clean plates exclusively because what it's going to do is ex exclusively use that Photoshop file that I created rather than search uh, before and after frames to pull the texture that would be behind this uh, garbage can. We don't have it because the background does not move relative to the garbage can. So there's nothing there for it to find. So uh, I'm going to use a linear illumination model uh, similar to, to Photoshop in terms of uh, painting that uh, the garbage can back in. And I I'd like to use a, a blend dissolve rather than a randomized dissolve. It's basically how it feathers the edges and blends it in as it paints. So I mentioned early on that we are doing all the tracking and removal in Mocha, but we're compositing in After Effects. So what we're going to be doing is basically writing all of the removal passes from Mocha but we want to do the final compositing in After Effects. So when we have a case like this where the can and Pizza Dude overlap, we want to get a solid overwriting of the, the paint or the removal that overlaps Pizza Dude. So that's why I'm going to move this can removal all the way up to the top. So it's actually painting on the topmost layer. Um, but let me just jump to a different uh, frame just so you can see what's going to happen here. So I have my can remove track that I moved up to the top and everything should be set and good here so if I click on render it's going to take that clean plate clip and pop it right in there and paint it on that track in fact if I click render forward it's going to go frame by frame tr and track in that removal paint it back in for us nice and clean Now, when you're, you're wondering about that can area, this can area is actually quite vital because if I get rid of this, if I just um, delete that layer and I were to write the removal on this frame or render the removal, we're not going, it's basically not going to work because we have a contaminated mask area uh, where these things are uh, in, in terms of how they're overlapping. So let me undo that. There we go. So we have this area that kind of expands where our uh, removal can write. And if I click on render, we got a nice clean uh, removal there. So if I have this right backward, it should write straight through him. Now I could skip through these frames, but if I don't write them in After Effects, we're going to have missing uh, frames in the image sequence. We're going to get constant uh, reminders that we have missing frames and it's going to be really annoying. So it's best just to write it all the way through and deal with it rather than uh, try to save some time and skip through it. Okay, so if I let it all render out and play it out, this is what we end up with, which is a nice cleanly written series of images that are tracked in and distorted appropriately to match the movement of the scene. So what we end up with are a series of images in that directory that I defined earlier. Uh, so we have both the matte image as well as the RGB image right here that has the full uh, sequence written back to the plate. So we can take the, the matte and the removals and get the compositing done in After Effects and also add our particle and lens flare effects. And that's what I'm going to do next. But before I do that, I'm going to organize the mat and removals into two different directories. It's very important to do that 
or you might run the risk of losing your project because if you close out or create a new project when you close out there's a little option right here to retain all of these renders and uh, you can actually run the risk of losing a lot of the stuff that you've written back so before we get too far let's organize so let's put all of our matte images in a matte folder and a removal in another folder. There. Now before I close out of Mocha, I'm also going to get our shape data. So we'll get Mocha, uh, Mocha shape data for AE. We'll save this to the effects folder. Just so we have it. Now, off to After Effects. Okay, so here in After Effects, we'll take the removals that we've generated and composite them in. Also do a little bit of uh, matte work, a little bit of roto, and attach the particle effects and lens flare effects to the tracking that we did in Mocha Pro. So this is the composite, this is the finished version. Let me start a new project and let's start all over from scratch. So first let's start by getting the footage re uh, imported. So I've got shot one, this is my clean plate, and I can import that and drop it into a new composition. Now notice this shot has time code from the original shoot. I'm gonna set this back to zero, just so that my timeline starts at zero. Now I'm going to import the removal that I did here. So this is that TIFF sequence. When I wrote this, I started at frame 24 because I wasn't going to do the first second. It just was redundant, so I didn't need to do that. So I've got that selected. I've got TIFF sequence selected. Um, I need the alpha channel. And let's drop this in and go to 24 frames, which is one second. Now this brings us to an interesting point here. Let's take a look at our original shot. Our shot here is 11 seconds long, 20, 23976. This shot right here is an image sequence. Image sequences, unless you change this uh, default setting in, embedded in your uh, preferences, this is going to be 30 frames per second. So I need to go in and make sure that we are set to 23976. And I'm starting one second in or at the 24th frame, as you can see right there. And these two clips should line up exactly. The only difference is the can in the background. So now we need that matte area because I'm just going to exclude the matte of that, that can and leave the original plate intact. So I could go in and import the mat that I did. That's one option. And I think it's always good to have that to hand this off to a compositor that you're working with. But we can also work with the shape that we generated. So let's go back to that same directory. And I have that can area shape right here. That's a shape for After Effects. I'll close up this folder. I have it open three times. And let's just open this in your favorite text editor. Copy that create a new shape. This will be our can map. And rewind to the beginning, hit paste. And this is lined up right with the track. So this is a nice little clean area that I can use to just isolate that removal. In fact, what I can do is say use the alpha mat of that mat area. Now if I'd like to adjust this at all, I can go in and I usually add a uh, fast blur and a uh, matte, uh, matte choker. I'll just add the simple choker right here. In fact, I should put the simple choker before that. So I can set the simple choker to a negative value to, ex to extend it or bring it down to contract the area of the matte. And I can soften it a little bit by adding just a little bit of a blur. Now at this point, we should pick a point in time where we'd like this can to disappear. Now I'm going to actually do it a little bit earlier than in the final film, uh, just to add a little bit more of a challenge here. So 
we have him walking that way and then right about here he intersects with that can so I'm gonna say at that point let's say two just as he reveals it let's say 220 I'm gonna have that can disappear so we have this overlapping section right here that we need to get rid of and that's where we're gonna to need to do a little bit of roto to clean that up but only gonna, it's only gonna be a few frames so I'm gonna hold uh, shift one down so I can set uh, a marker so I can uh, keep track of where that gets zapped away. In fact, I could double click on it and just say can zap right there. That's where it goes. So I can trim the mat and the removal up right to that frame right there. In fact, I can hit alt left bracket to trim it right to that frame. Maybe I'll push it forward one more frame just so we, we see it just a little bit more. Maybe two frames. Was it two? No, 221. So, right there, we'll zap it away. All right, so being that I've presented myself with this challenge of creating the zap effect right where he overlaps with the can, I have presented myself a little bit of roto work. Now, I prefer to do this in Mocha rather than uh, using the roto brush in After Effects. I'm just more comfortable with it, and I think it's a better suited tool for this. So I'm going to go here so uh, I can track this in Mocha AE. I could also use some Mocha Pro, but this is just going to save me a step. It's going to take this shot and throw it direct, directly into Mocha uh, after I remind myself to register. Uh, let's overwrite the old project. Uh, so right about that 60 frame mark is where he overlaps the can. In fact, let's zoom in a little bit. Hold down Z for my zoom tool. X to pan around. And right about there is where I uh, need to start. So I'm going to do a little bit of a track of his torso, and the torso shifts around. It shifts, uh, obviously, position, but also shifts perspective a little bit. So I'm going to try to get as accurate of a track of this torso as I can. So let's click on perspective, maybe bump the minimum percent at uh, pixels used up just a little bit. Maybe I'll add one more point in here Need to keep this close to the torso. Now I'm just going to track this forward one frame at a time. I don't need a lot of frames tracked in here. So in fact, it looks like that one's drifting a little bit. So just after the arm clears the can. There we go. Okay, so this is our track layer. Let's uncheck the cog wheel, lock that, and then we can make our roto layer. Zoom way in here, and we could use an X spline or a B spline. I still find X splines uh, easier to use in Mocha. Rotoing with, uh, even though this shape I think would be easier to trace as a B spline with the tangents and handles and all that. I think uh, for tracking purposes, it really shows why X plans are the way to go. I think you just end up with too many points to contend with in terms of points, tangents, tangent angles, tangent lengths, and all that kind of stuff. In fact, the fewer points you can have, the better off you're going to be. Okay, so there's a basic shape. This will be our roto. And I want to link this to the tracking layer. And this isn't going to be perfect. This will probably slip and slide a little bit, but it's it's a good starting point for us. Okay, so if I play through this, yeah, it does slip a little bit, um, but it also moves with it, so that's half the battle. And all I need to do is refine the edge and make sure these all stay locked to the side here. So we still have this basic uh, uh, curve here. So as long as my points kind of stay in the relative same spots, we should get a pretty easy roto here. Just a few keyframes. 
Looks like I might need to add one point right inside here. All right, I'm going to call that good. Also, keep in mind we're going to have lens flare f effects and all that kind of stuff uh, also intersecting this. So this doesn't need to be 100% perfect. I think uh, this should be good. So let's uh, export the shape data. We'll copy this to the clipboard, hop back to After Effects, and uh, what I'm going to do is take this mat and put this in its own its own composition. And inside here, I'll create another uh, solid and paste that shape data in. Remember, put yourself at the beginning because it's going to have all those keyframes there. So there is where the can, where the arm overlaps the can. So in the mat, what I can do for this layer is set the blending mode to Silhouette Alpha, and that will chop out the matte area that we had left in there. Let's turn this off. So right there at the point where it zaps away, we've matted out the removal area with that roto that we've created. And now it's time to add our effects. Right about now would be a good idea to uh, save what I'm doing. So with the removal complete, that's going to wrap this up for part one. In part two, we'll cover adding the lens flares, particle effects, as well as doing the color grading for the shot. So I'll see you in part two of this lesson. Thanks, Harry. I'm looking forward to part two. If you enjoyed this tutorial, check out Harry's site at graymachine.com where you can find a whole bunch of awesome goodies, including free presets, tutorials, and a link to Harry's fantastic training DVDs like Complete Training for Trap Code Particular or Trap Code Form Training. Also, don't forget to check out Harry's killer Red Giant Guru preset packs, looping backgrounds for Trap Code Suite, cinematic flares for No Light Factory, video rock for Particular, weddings for Trap Code Suite, and holidays for Particular. Because, hey, it's always that most wonderful time of the year. And by the way, you can get all of those and much more as a part of the Red Giant Guru Suite. Don't forget, you can download a free trial version of the software that Harry used in this tutorial at RedGiantSoftware.com. And you can get free presets for Red Giant plugins on RedGiantPeople.com. And to keep up with the latest news about new products, tutorials, tips, and deals, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or on our blog. Once again... I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. I'll see you next time.